Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to London for those who are, are visiting, uh, like myself, stay from Dubai. Um, a lot of familiar um, faces here. Uh, it always feels good. It feels like a family. I usually, I mean, uh, a colleague of mine, James, usually presents at the Lloyd Summit, uh, and I, I know you guys are very fond of him. He's a Kiwi, you know. Yes, so, uh, yeah, James is a Kiwi, uh, so I promise you uh, good content like James, but with a different accent. <laughs> You'll have to figure out what that is. It, I mean, if you guys understood James, you probably would understand me, so. <laughs> My one on one with him are really challenging. But, <laughs> uh, no, he's a great guy, uh, and he helped also with, with putting this content uh, uh, together. So, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about loyalty and it's tech. It's somewhat the story of my life as well. It's tech meets loyalty. So I come from a technology background. Uh, and then I actually uh, fell in love uh, with loyalty. Uh, and I consider myself, compared to all of you in the room, as a rookie when it comes to loyalty. Uh, however, I made an attempt to uh, uh, at least understand uh, the challenges uh, and, and, of course, bring technology. And when I talk about technology, it's much not hardcore technology. It's mostly about how do we take the loyalty um, uh, program that we have at, at Emirates and, and Fly Dubai uh, to the, into the digital and data age. So I took over in 2016. Uh, and I will just start with this because, uh, you know, this track is about talking about technology and the influence of technology. And everything I have in here has been uh, really uh, uh, enabled by technology. Technology can be a big enabler, but can, can be also an inhibitor when you, out, you outgrow your own systems. And if I start left to right, since I'm originally uh, from, uh, from, from, from Tunisia, so we actually write this way. So I'm going to start with the help come first. Uh, so we're, if, if I look at what we've done since we, we've, uh, we've taken, you know, I've, I've taken all the program, and this is not blowing my own trumpet, but it's actually to, to just make a case, um, that we have multiplied the number of partner transactions by 3x, and actually multiplied our member base by 3x. So we're hovering around 35 million members today. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to transactions, we have about 100,000 <coughs> transaction, earned transactions daily. We have 150 million miles redeemed on a daily basis. Uh, so it's, it's a, lot, a lot of transactions. And, and, and again, we're outgrowing uh, the current system that we have. Um, uh, Mark Nasser from Air Canada reminds me that it's not important that I have 35 million, that I need to talk about the active members. <laughs> I've listened to him. And the past couple of years, we've been outgrowing our uh, growth uh, in member base uh, when it comes to active members, so we're growing by 22% of active members. Um, we are an international carrier. We have a lot of infrequent travelers. But if I look at the 12 months program active, we're, we're now uh, have, have uh, uh, surpassed 5 million members out of the 55 million. Again, we're, in, we're, we're by design an international traveler, a traveler uh, business, um, and therefore we have a lot of infrequent travelers. And this is what brings me into what we have done really to activate these members. So there are really six tactics that we have used. One is we democratize the access to rewards uh, with the introduction, for example, of, of cash plus miles um, that a lot of people from the first mile that earn the ability for them to, uh, to, to get the reward ticket. Uh, we expanded um, tremendously our ecosystem of partners um, and then went into the everyday space as well. We introduced something, uh, a platform called Scours Every Day with the help of uh, our friends from FGI here, um, to be able to uh, interact with our members on a daily basis. Uh, we expanded the, the ecosystem of partners, again, going away, away from being just a frequent flyer program, catering to the top 2% of our member base to catering to all our member base as well by expanding the ecosystem and going into lifestyle as well. So whether it's you know, in the travel space, hotels, uh, uh, airport retail, uh, like the by duty free or Ether rewards, uh, but also, you know, car rental, these are the travel space, but also the lifestyle as well. We came uh, with things like Skyward's Mile Small uh, that, uh, that, that uh, a lot of them are remember to earn and burn on, on, uh, uh, with a number of online dictators. Effective loyalty tactics, I'll, let, I'll, I'll talk uh, a little bit about it. We moved away from just blast campaigns and email campaigns into understanding a bit and segmenting. So whether it is email, but also one thing we've introduced 
which is, I, I think, an industry first that <coughs> use all impact incentives. So people who are shopping on our website, uh, you know, we use loyalty tactics to incentivize them to convert. Scours numbers convert four times more than non scours numbers when you're marketing. And one of the reasons is the incentive that we're putting in to convert people while they are shopping uh, on, uh, on, our, uh, on our website. And more and more people are coming to the direct channels for us. Um, so that direct channel is extremely important. Uh, personalized digital engagement, uh, I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, things we're doing, for example, for my retailing with the help of points, for example, where we're personalizing the campaigns. Um, we moved away again from blast campaigns into making it much more personalized. And targeted product uh, propositions are things like the subscription program that we've uh, introduced, like Skyros Plus, which is gaining a lot of momentum as well. Um, so on top of our tier structure, we have a way um, for, for, for members to uh, accelerate their access to rewards um, through this uh, Scours Plus uh, subscription. So all of that has led into this uh, growth that we have uh, witnessed, uh, both in terms of uh, you know, transactions, but also in terms of accruing and redemptions uh, overall, not just partner ones. Um, this is a difficult slide to read, but just wanted to highlight uh, how we think about innovation. We actually think about innovation, and it's really in our DNA from the beginning when we started the transformation, is both in terms of product innovations with things like Scouts Plus that we have introduced, but also business model innovation. Uh, we became a de facto loyalty currency for a number of retailers in the UAE, for example. The Scouts Every Day platform has offered these retailers a very easy way to uh, onboard and become um, uh, you know, a partner of ours. Again, this is one of the, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, di you know, difficult maybe points that we have when we onboard on partners directly. It takes us nearly six months to do so for any partners to, to onboard. Scours every day allows you within within three days to onboard somebody on the platform, um, and we become de facto a loyalty currency of Dubai. So we, you know, you can think of us beyond just being the loyalty currency of Emirates and fly Dubai. We are the loyalty currency of Dubai Mall, uh, which is you know, a shopping uh, mall, a destination on its own uh, within Dubai, but we're also the loyalty currency for a number of small retailers who don't have a reward program. Interestingly enough, Dubai Mall has, has or, or has a currency within their holding, but they chose to use the Scours Mall's currency to be relevant to visitors and residents in Dubai. So that's a business model uh, innovation uh, on its own. The work that also we've done with Dubai B2P, one of the first programs to work with an airport retailer as well. But also the, the whole process innovation, management innovation, big focus on, 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 on fraud management, for example, uh, from a process perspective. Uh, and when I talk about management innovation, it's the whole prioritization framework. At any point of time, we have 100 initiatives that are running in parallel, a lot of them needing technology work. And I've got people competing within our, our loyalty program into getting that. So having a prioritization f f uh, framework is extremely important. So I created this function called Strategic Enablement Office. Their role is, beyond the project office, is really to take the strategy, take all these initiatives that are coming, and to, to be able to manage the prioritization framework. And it's very regimented uh, prioritization framework that allows us to uh, make sure that we're working on the right things, because we only have so much capacity to do so. And this is going to become more and more imp important as we're re-platforming and moving into a new, new platform. So the in-path loyalty tactics, uh, tactics what, what it is, is that people who, uh, we push people to sign on uh, uh, when they're coming to the website so that we know who you are. And based on the profile of the member, based on the flights that we're trying to support uh, because of the load factors, etc., we're pushing people to either switch cells. So if you have multiple London flights and we have one with the lower load, load factors, we push people, uh, we put the incentives on the lower load factor um, uh, uh, flight, but we also uh, upsell. So we may put uh, an incentive on a fair brand that is a higher fair brand. And the results are really amazing in terms of what we're bringing in from a conversion perspective. I mentioned for X, Skywards versus non Skywards, but also in terms of um, uh, uh, X, uh, additional revenue as well. So, for example, we offer as one of the incentives, uh, one of the incentives is Casper Smiles uh, conversion. And the other incentive is around upgrades, uh, uh, et cetera. So, so this has allowed us, uh, again, technology allowed us and deep integration within the uh, EOL uh, Emirates Online path helped us with, uh, with this. This is work that we, we're doing with our partners at Points. Uh, and again, I've mentioned that we have 
reduced the campaign size, so we reduced by nearly 50% uh, the people that we are targeting, but we doubled the average transaction revenue. Um, so we kept the revenue going, as you can see from, from when we started working with points on this, uh, you know, that's the base at one. We're now about six times higher from a revenue perspective when it comes to my day. Again, all of this is about personalization and what we're doing and what technology plays a big role. Uh, I've mentioned uh, fraud prevention, extremely important uh, given the numbers that I've talked about about how much redemption and transactions are happening in a day. We don't, uh, we, we, we ensure that the, the earn and burn process is very seamless. However, we have a lot of technology in, in the back that allows us to prevent, to preventively look at transactions. So we intercept about 2% of the transactions uh, and about 1% are actually uh, uh, fraudulent transactions. So all this work uh, helps us protect uh, our members but also protect the revenue as well for us. More and more as, as loyalty programs are expanding and becoming truly a currency or a digital currency, you will see fraudsters coming and trying to be much more sophisticated about the work that we're doing. And without technology, you will not be able to get to this point. Okay, there's really six things that I want to bring around our tech principles. So one is uh, striking a balance between replatforming. So we've started this massive transformation about replatforming, but we have a lot of business as usual. I talked about 100 initiatives at any point of time. And right now, a big struggle between keeping BAU going, keeping that innovation flowing, while we're replatforming. This is open heart surgery. Anybody who has uh, tried this uh, will tell you, uh, uh, this is a massive program, it's a three, three year program for us to just uh, move to a new platform uh, working with, with IBS on, um, um, on this. Uh, integrating privacy, security, and fraud prevention at design phase with, with all these initiatives, we have two things. One, we think about data. How do we capture data? How do we analyze data? And the second thing is about how do we ensure that we are preventing uh, 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 from fraud? And this needs to happen at the design phase. It's forced through that whole uh, privatization process we're doing, but also it's forced. It's one of the things that we have to do for, from any initiative that's, that's going on. Um, one thing that, that, from, that from the onset decided to do is to gain scale through working with partners. And so um, uh, a few of them are in the room, uh, points I mentioned. Uh, Asanda as well, uh, we're working with them in terms of getting that type of scales. Think Kyle is here and the team. Uh, we've uh, simplified and personalized the member digital experience. Uh, Skywars every day, we work with LGI. Again, technology helps us uh, into making that happen. And uh, you know, the carbon linking approach that we've done on Skywars every day makes it totally seamless for our members to walk into a Costa coffee shop, you know, uh, order their drink, and well, while they leave the shop, getting the mics uh, there. And then for, for purpose integration with EK channels. We have 55 EK channels we work through and we are not their priority by far. And we have to convince them, uh, th this is your airport check-in, this is your, your, uh, your reservation system, this is the, uh, and, 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 and most of these are legacy systems as well. Very difficult to integrate with. They're going through modernization on their own. Why we are going through modernization as well. So you can just imagine the complexity of doing all of this, but our reliance on them is big. We made the decision to integrate totally with EK and Fly Dubai, and really, and, and for us, our primary purpose is to drive conversion and to drive uh, more commercial <coughs> revenue, but that integration comes at the price. So we have to find a way for us to work and convince them that we're our priority as well. And that's part of it, uh, I mean, this, this, this gives you the complexity of what we're dealing with. What you have in purple is truly our, our uh, core system and everything else is our, our, uh, our integration. I talked about 55 uh, system touch points, including, for example, because we provide free Wi-Fi and people to sign on when they're on board, working with the SIPA uh, on air and working with the, with, with the new system that we have on our 350s. Uh, I mean, all of these integrations are extremely important. We have to migrate a number of partners as well. Uh, into the new platform, um, you know, we're talking about 300 stakeholders that needs to be convinced, etc. But the reason we're doing this replatforming is to move to a scalable uh, uh, platform that will allow us to onboard partners very quickly, that will allow us uh, to capture data and be able to use it, that will all, uh, allow us to, to uh, provide more security on the platform uh, and, and to enrich our product pro proposition. We have a number of things that are in the pipeline from a strategic standpoint and we cannot be done just by the existing platform that is not, uh, cannot be scaled uh, further. This is actually the, the, the same way 
uh, they're just, uh, but it, you know, presented in a different way. I'm told that I only have 10 seconds, so I just go to <laughs> securing the future, securing the future, so technology plays a big role. And you know, for me, when I think about securing the future, these are the three elements. Fortify Foundation, one of them is technology refresh we're, we're undergoing. Uh, the second one is the sole member data augmentation. Um, you know, uh, part of the the the, the 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 deal that we have signed with one of the um, one of the networks uh, with Visa is again also understanding better the data, augmenting our data as well. Uh, preventive fraud management is very important, and then bringing a talent on on board. So we. You know, we have a lot of loyalty experts, but we're bringing in people with different, uh, uh, you know, um, backgrounds for us. So, you know, having this technology literacy, for example, is very important for people to understand whenever they're coming up with initiatives and ideas, what does it mean from a technology impact as well. Having an analytical mindset as well. So this talent fusion is really how the team is composed today. And if you look at our team, uh, it, is, it, it, it is a bit of a combination of all of these things. And where we're going with the program with keeping the elite tier to exclusivity, this is very important for Emirates as well, so that we don't burden Emirates operationally. We're going to 55 million members. We're, we're hoping in, in, in a few years to get to 50 million members uh, and 8 million active members. Again, to, to please Mark, I have to always talk about active, <coughs> active members. So, uh, you know, it's just important for us to keep that, that tier exclusivity so that, you know, uh, uh, as well. So we're, we're working on that. Uh, we're working on preferential reward access for our members, um, and uh, we're working on member benefits and bundling. Technology is going to be key uh, for all these elements to, uh, 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 you know, to actually happen. Wow, that was a, a rush, and I have to keep some some energy for the time. <laughs>